Morning. Everybody sufficiently caffeinated? I just got, uh, got home last night about midnight. I got off an airplane. I was out on the East Coast this week. And uh, I'm going to uh, have some comments today about some of the conversations we had on the trip. We were on an economic development trip talking to companies, large and small, uh, transportation companies, site selectors, and people who actually make decisions on where to go and what to do and where to risk capital and where to put venture capital and, and uh, all the things that we find so important. So, Dr. Frank, thank you so much for setting this up today. Uh, Madam President from New Mexico State, uh, President Couture is here. I think Dr. Lopez is here. I haven't seen Dr. Dan. There's Dr. Dan over there. I know we have people from AFRL here today. We have people from Sandia National Labs here today. We have people from CNM, uh, New Mexico Tech. Uh, all of these great, this, this string of pearls, if you will, and you're going to hear a lot about this today. You're going to hear a lot about Los Alamos to Las Cruces, and it's, it's so vitally important that we have that conversation because uh, I, I got a chance to uh, read Mr. Wang's book uh, over the last day or so and he, he makes some very interesting comments and some of those things dovetail so nicely into the state of New Mexico and into the city of Albuquerque. And, and a couple of things that he brings up that I think are important today is the fact that you're in this room is, is because you matter. Uh, this, this keystone concept that I know he'll talk about. Uh, this idea of partnerships, this idea of all of us coming together. But what it really says is everybody in this room has a part to play. And if we can all figure out a way to knock barriers down and have a candid conversation, and I think you heard the governor hit a little bit on that, and I'm going to hit on it a little bit more in just a minute. If we can have a candid conversation about what we need to do, the parts and pieces are there. In Mr. Wang's book, there's a, there's a map of the United States. And in that, in the, on that map, it talks about the, the per capita um, graduation rate for higher degrees at universities. And you talk about being on the top of the right lists. We were, if you look at the color coding, I don't remember what page it's on, but if you look at the color coding in that book, we're at the very top. We're one of the states in the United States that really has a, a pipeline of postgraduate talent. And that matters so much when we're talking about innovation. And so I just want to make sure that what we do after today is that we go out and, and we sit down and, and we don't make this a one-day thing. And I think that anybody that's involved in today will tell you the same thing. And all the people in this room who have spent their lives with economic development, with education, trying to be innovators, making sure that we are a place that can thrive will tell you the same thing. We have to leave today. And we have to go out for coffee. We have to go out and get some lunch. We have to come to each other's offices. We have to talk about the parts that each of us play in this process. And as I was reading Mr. Wang's book and, and as I've read other books on economic development, one of the things that, that I try to do is bring a perspective. I stand here today as a graduate of the Anderson School of Business with a degree in finance. I'm a guy that borrowed a couple thousand dollars to start a business, bought a used truck and a tool belt, and started, started a business. I've been greatly blessed to be in the, in the state legislature on the Appropriations and Finance Committee, on the Rural and Economic Development Committee, and now I'm getting a great opportunity to be the mayor of the largest city in our state. So you, you've got to, we all of us have to do this. We all of us have to think to this, this, you know, as we turn the pages on these books and as we have these conversations, we have to be thinking about where's the mayor? As I was reading your book, Mr. Wang, I was thinking, I told him this earlier, I'm flipping the pages and I'm like, where's the mayor? 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 <laughs> We have to do that. We have to do that. Because if we're going to come up with a formula, um, we have to know where we fit in that. I am not, sorry, Dean Brown, going to invent the next great biomedical device in my garage. Um, you know, I, I, I couldn't even get through differential equations. So that's not my role. But what's my role and what's your role? What's your role if you're a VC person? What's your role if you're an educator here? What's your role if you're an elected official? My speech today is supposed to be about um, the city and its relationship with UNM. And we're doing some great things. We're, we're really breaking down some of these barriers. We're, 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 we're working with the School of Architecture to bring the School of Archite Architecture to downtown Albuquerque with City Lab to try to make sure that the university, our flagship university, has its tentacles throughout our community come to areas of, of our city that need a, a boost, that need a catalyst, and we're, and we're working on doing that. We're certainly working on uh, partnerships uh, to make sure that we've got 
um, cybersecurity research and things going on in our city. We're, we're signing MOUs with Sandia National Laboratories. We're signing MOUs with the University of New Mexico. We're doing all of those things that, that break the barrier down so that we can at least get to the table and start the conversations other than just running across each other every once in a while and saying, how's it going, how's it going? Shouldn't we do more? Yes, we should. Let's get together someday. It's time that we, that we get off, uh, off center and really start having those conversations. Uh, with film and digital media, and Learner in our department is doing a great job. We're working with Bieber on lots and lots of different things. I think one of the great examples of how a city can help in this process, you know, where's the mayor, where's the mayor, where's the city? I think Sandia Science and Technology Park is a perfect example of what uh, a government can do. We can have lots of conversations about incentives, uh, and they're important. We can have lots of conversations about all the things that we can do uh, from funding, formulas, and things, and they're all very, very important. But one of the things that the city of Albuquerque did that mattered was we spent about $5.8 million making sure that the Science and Technology Park on Eubank had roads and sewer and gutter and infrastructure and power and all the things that businesses and innovators need so that once you're taking the R and moving it into the D, you have the facilities in place uh, to, to, to do business. So there's, that's certainly um, mundane, but I think it's certainly important and that's one of the things that we're trying to work on. In preparation for this today, um, as part of my conversations on this East Coast trip that I was on, I was asking people, I was asking people from the Fortune 500 companies and I was asking site selectors, what are examples of universities that you've seen out there that have great partnerships with their communities? So then, you know, of course, thank God for Google, you get on there and you start, you start looking at things. And as we start looking at innovations that we can put forward as a city in our relationship with the University of New Mexico, but I would say it's not just with UNM, I would say it's with New Mexico State, I would say it's with, with New Mexico Tech, I would say it's with LANL, even though those uh, aren't in our city. You start hearing names like Purdue and their programs, Ohio State, the New Frontier program. Um, you talk about the State University System of New York and their work with microelectronics. You talk about Central Florida and their digital media work that they're doing, Arizona State with bioengineering, Baylor with their new sciences program, and how those things are, are working inside of their communities to bolster those things. Well, those are different clusters that you have. Um, and I, he, I don't want to talk too much about Mr. Wang's book because he, he, that's his job this afternoon. But, but you talk about clusters and how they work and the upsides and the downsides. And you talk about incentives and the upsides and downsides. And I think, I think his book hits on a couple of different philosophies and I think it really does matter. There's a difference between fostering innovation. So there's a difference between getting to this and making this. So we have two things. We have multiple challenges in the state of New Mexico, I think, and in the city of Albuquerque. We have the challenge of making sure we're a great place to think this up, to innovate this, to do those seven things, uh, those seven social traits and cultural traits that Mr. Wang hits about in his book. Everything from you know, breaking rules and dreaming to paying it forward to experimenting to erring and then failing and then persisting and all of those things. And I think UNM and, and, and has a great role to play in that. But then we also have a role to play in making sure that once somebody innovates that, whether it's here or elsewhere, that we can get them to make it here. And that's where I think the other side of the equation comes in, and that's what I think the governor was talking about a little bit, about, about having a conversation about are we an attractive place to, to make this. If you look at the analyticals and you talk about the city of Albuquerque, uh, what, what people like Moody's will say is are, you know, one of our great strengths is our public sector, and that's absolutely true. It's one of our great strengths, and we should bolster that, and we should make sure that we protect that, and we should make sure that we go out every day and, and make sure that we are protecting our great public sector resources. We have to do that. But what they'll also tell you is that's also one of our weaknesses because we have, for the longest time in New Mexico, forgotten that we also need to be a very robust place to have a private sector. And that's where this candid conversation comes in. That's where Richard Anklum's sitting out here in the audience. That's what we worked on last year. That's what Richard did a great job on this tax study. So that we can have a candid conversation. And as I said earlier, the governor hit on that. We need to talk about the things where we're not up to speed. You talk to any coach. Um, Paul Krebs is out here. You talk to any coach. You got to watch the game film. <clears throat> you got to go out and say, Okay, we won the game yesterday, but where did we fail in that game yesterday? Or we lost the game yesterday. Where did we fail? Where did we do well? And you start peeling that onion, 
And I hope, I hope, I hope that we're in a place in New Mexico right now where we can put partisan differences aside and we can have a candid conversation of where our weaknesses are. Is it, 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 and, that, and that matters. The post-innovation side of this equation matters a great deal. So is that single-weighted apportionment, you know, single sales factor? I can tell you last week I talked to people that looked me right in the eye and they said, you know what, for some of our clients, you, New Mexico is just not even on the map. Why is that? Well, your tax structure just doesn't fit what they want to do. Okay, so what do we do? Do we want to have a conversation about that? Or do we want to say, well, okay, you're not for New Mexico. You talk, they, they talk about things that are, you know, throwing yourself, talk about throwing yourself on the sword, talk about right to work. You know, I heard four times last week, are you a right to work state or not? No, we're not. Does that matter? I asked. Well, to some it does, to some it doesn't. But a lot of times, for at least a third of the people in the country, um, you don't even get the box checked, so they don't even look at you. So can we have that conversation in a professional manner? Maybe it's time that we do that. Maybe there's not the will to do it. I don't know. We'll see what the legislature does when it comes time to talk about the tax code and some of those other things. But you also have to balance that, obviously, with the other side of the equation. The needs are always this great, and the resources are always this many. So you, you have to, as you're talking, and I say this as a business person, you have to have that conversation about um, is that, are those dollars worth it? We've had that discussion with the film industry over the last couple of years. Is the amount of money we spend on the film industry worth it? Well, I can tell you as, as, a, as a mayor of Albuquerque, the film industry is fantastic for the city of Albuquerque. But when our, legislatures go, our legislators go up and have to make those decisions, um, they also have to weigh that against a room full of people that have other needs and other wants and other criteria that they're trying to meet. So anyway, I, I'll, cut my, I'll cut my remarks off with that and basically say I think there's a lot of room uh, to do great things here. Uh, as we travel around the country, and I know you all do too, I've been to Israel since I've been mayor, talking about innovation, talking about tech transfer. I've been to China, talking about how great the goods and services in New Mexico are and how they need to look at that. We're going to Mexico uh, next month to have that same conversation. I've been to the East Coast. I've been to the West Coast. I've been to the heartland. I've been all over this country talking about the city of Albuquerque. And you start hearing the same things over and over again. And I'll end on this one because it's, it's one of the biggest ones. And what I heard was, we don't know who you are. And I said, you know, we'd have, a, we'd have an hour conversation just yesterday. We have an hour conversation about all the things that we do well and all the things that we're proud of. And you should look at us. And then you say, then you hear from a site selector, our clients just don't know who you are. Well, that's all of our jobs in this room. That's all of our jobs are, are to go out and sing that song and make sure people know about New Mexico. I certainly think uh, we're going to talk about some things to the city of Albuquerque to make sure we get a little bit, little bit of budget help on the next budget uh, to be able to, to go out there and sing our song on a national scale a little bit better because I think, I think one of the things that we should understand is that we do have a lot going on. Uh, there's a lot of great things in the city of Albuquerque. There's a lot of great things in New Mexico. Our universities, that string of pearls, if you will, from Los Alamos to Las Cruces, there's so much there. And I, th I just think, really, if people knew more about us, I think that's about half the battle. Yes, we need to be more competitive on our tax codes in certain areas. Yes, we need to make sure incentives are robust and in place. Yes, we need to make sure that we, we have a place where you can nurture and grow and be an innovator and have that safety net. Yes, we need to protect the national laboratories. I mean, the laundry list for economic development is long and it's diverse, and that's good. But at the end of the day, if people don't know who we are and what we're doing, um, we're not going to win some of the battles that we want to win. So I think that's another discussion that we need to have. So thank you. I know that you are all busy. I see all the faces in the room and all the important work that you do around the state of New Mexico. And for you to take a full day um, to be here and have this conversation says a great deal about your your passion about New Mexico. So um, as a mayor, my door is open. And after today, please, let's have a further conversation and see where we can get, because I know the future is bright. Thank you so much.